Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about the order in which we should go about healing. And this is a very important video because I think it's going to clear up a lot of confusion. Especially because healing in itself can be, can feel like quite a complex thing. You know, there's a lot of different factors that come into it. And if you don't know what order to go about doing things, there's so many things, you're just going to feel overwhelmed and get stuck. So I want to walk you through the order in which I would tackle these things. This isn't a fully comprehensive guide. I'm just trying to dial in on a very particular area here, which is what order do we want to be facing things like mold, EBV, Lyme, parasites, all of these different kind of obstacles that are in the way of our, of our healing process. Which ones should we tackle first? Because if you understand which ones to tackle first, for one, you're going to make significantly like more and faster progress. And the second point is you're going to avoid a lot of negative reactions. And I'm going to explain that in just a moment. But there's a there's a really like solid logical reason that when I when I explain this to you, you're gonna you're gonna think that makes so much sense. I'm gonna I'm gonna do these in this order. But what is the order of healing? How do we wanna how do we want to go about this? How do we want to tackle this? So we want to actually start from the smallest to the largest. And the the reason for this is larger things have the smaller things in them. So let's let's take an example. So you you've you've got a whole bunch of different things going on. You've got mold, you've got heavy metal toxicity, you've got Lyme disease, you've got EBV, you've got candida, you've got SIBO, you've got yeast overgrowths, your guts are a complete mess, bloating and gas. Like everything is just it's all happening all at the same time. And the first thing you decide to go after is parasites. See, the thing is, you, you tackle the parasites. And whenever you kill a parasite, so you, say you're taking some uh, antimicrobial herbs, you're, you're taking some really powerful antiparasitic herbs. Every time you kill one of these parasites, so be this like a big, a big worm or a fluke or like the, one of these, or, these multi-celled organisms, these are really big. You know, these, are, these have their own ecosystems. So inside a big worm, like that worm has its own microbiome that is full of different bacteria and different yeasts and different viruses and different toxins. And when you kill it, everything that it was holding, everything that was inside of it is released. And then your body has to deal with all of that. So one of the one of the reasons that we actually develop parasites or these these kinds of um, like these organisms, so even like SIBO, Candida, uh, Lyme, and other types of parasites are actually a way that our body is kind of outsourcing the the job of handling toxicity. So if you go in and you like kill all of these worms straight away, all of the toxins that they were holding now get released, and your body can't let the worms do that job. For your body which means your body is now overwhelmed it's flooded in toxicity and you feel horrible and this is a this is like a classic herxheimer reaction and this is actually a bad thing this means that you've you've done this in the wrong hierarchical order you've gone to the to the last step first and it's going to cause a massive shock through your whole system it's going to make you feel like crap it's going to slow down your healing process and because you release all of this toxicity into your body and your body isn't able to handle it as soon as you stop trying to kill the parasites, the parasites will move back in. Whether that's candida, SIBO, or actually like worms and flukes, they're just going to come back because your body actually needs them to do a job. So if you try and jump to that step first, you're actually just going to make yourself feel really crap, make very little to no progress, and your body is actually going to actively undo that work anyway. So we need to start from the bottom and work up. We want to start at the toxin level. So we're looking at the size of these things. So we're looking for the really small toxins first. So this is your heavy metals. This is your mycotoxins. This is your plastics and your pesticides. This is your like inert molecules. So they're not living organisms at this stage. These are basically just substances. They're, they're dead. They're not alive, but they're toxic. They have a harmful component to the body. This is where we start. We need to start removing these things. So we need to support your body in removing these things and provide it everything that it needs to do so. So here you could look at your antioxidant status. That can be really helpful. I did a video the other day on antioxidant loading. You can go and find that on YouTube. Just search my name, William Dickinson, antioxidant loading. This is going to provide your body with everything that it needs to start removing this at this micro scale. So these, these very tiny, tiny toxins, so mycotoxins, 
the heavy metals, plastics, pesticides, glyphosate, all of these different things at this micro level. Antioxidants are really, really helpful at this stage. So going go, going there can be really, really helpful. You also want to work on the gut. All of these toxins, they either leave through your sweat, through your urine, or through your stool. And 80% of them are going through your stool. So working on the gut at this stage can be really, really helpful. This is often why when you have a toxicity problem, your gut becomes a mess. You know, you've got the SIBO, the candida, the parasites in the gut. This is because they're actually helping you. They're trying to help you remove these toxins from your body. So if you can support your body in doing it, these things actually as adaptive responses do not need to be there anymore and they will they will move themselves out. So we focus smallest thing first, which is these this it's basically toxins. So whatever toxin exposure it is, say you've got mercury toxicity and Lyme disease, forget about the Lyme disease, fix the mercury toxicity first. By the time you fixed it, you, the Lyme disease will probably go away. So always start on the lowest thing. And then probably the next level things will actually disappear. If they don't, that's when you want to tackle them. So you start small and build up. So next you want to move to viruses. The reason we do this is viruses also technically not really alive. They're, they're just, um, they they need your machinery in your body to to replicate. There's actually some really interesting theories, and I'm I have a tendency or a leniency actually towards this now with understanding how how the body works with the microflora and actually with these like parasites to actually achieve uh, health outcomes. So I believe that it's possible that your body can actually work with viruses to achieve certain jobs. You know, viruses can stimulate fevers, which are profoundly detoxing. They can, they can actually stimulate your immune response and they can, they can in a way kind of collaborate. So you'd only want to go after the viruses after you've cleared as much of this toxicity as you're able. And when you do go after these viruses, so say we're looking like EBV or uh, cyclomegavirus, or there's, there's a bunch of different kind of chronic viral infections that you can get, even common things like just having the common cold or a flu that you've just not been able to kick for a really long time. You you can start trying to clear these things, but again, working on the toxicity is the first step, and then you could go after these things. But I would go again, I would go after them in a more supportive way, where we're helping the body trigger its natural immune response to kill these things. So instead of trying to kill it with herbs or with like antiviral medications, we can look at fasting. We can do things to boost the body's natural immune system. So the antioxidant loading can be really helpful there as well. We're trying to get the body functioning again, so that it's able to destroy these things by itself because again if you just go in and you kill all this viral load off but you don't strengthen the host immune system as soon as they're exposed to a virus again it's going to come back you know and this is the thing about viruses they're not even alive all that happens is they become dormant they stop being active because they're not even alive in the first place so your body is what puts viruses into remission it's what makes them dormant so if you if you don't support the body and you just try to kill them they're just going to come back so Again, you're, you're working with the body through this process. Next step up from here, bacteria. So bacteria are slightly bigger than the, actually they're significantly bigger. They're like 100 times bigger than viruses. Viruses are tiny. We've got like the, the toxins, which are like minuscule, and then the viruses, which are tiny, and the bacteria, we start getting like significantly bigger here. Still single-celled, but they're, 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 still, they're still like quite small, all things considered. This is where you go after the bacteria stage. So this is things like Lyme disease. This could be things like SIBO. This is the stage that you would want to tackle these kinds of issues. My suggestion from here forward, if you want to tackle these things, actually is not to do some kind of broad spectrum therapy like antibiotics or antimicrobial herbs. It would be to use a more targeted therapy like bioresonance or using the, the body's um, natural healing mechanisms again. So boosting host immunity, your body will selectively target specific things. Another thing that can be really helpful at this stage is probiotics because probiotics are living antibiotic factories. They create different substances like hydrogen peroxide and other things that can destroy um, pathogens. They are in communication with your immune system all of the time. They can stimulate your macrophages. They can stimulate your secretory IgA in your gut. They can stimulate your mucosal immunity to fight uh, viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites, all these things. So your probiotics are like your biggest allies. They're like the army that your body employs to fight for you. And they're also bacteria themselves. So fighting bacteria with bacteria is a can be a pretty pretty useful way to, to go about it. So not a fan of broad, broad spectrum stuff. If you need to target something specifically, bioresonance is definitely the way to go. Extremely effective for treating things like, like Lyme, um, even EBV on the virus level. But again, if you haven't cleared up the terrain of the body first, you've still got this toxins 
present, as soon as you stop treatment, it will just come back. Again, because it's adaptive, the body is using these things to support it in the, in the healing process. From here, we move to yeast. So yeast is slightly bigger than bacteria. Yeast tend to have more of a, an affinity and, and yeast and up from here. So also parasites like worms and flukes and things like that. They tend to have an affinity, particularly for things like heavy metals. They're really good at eating them. One of the most common causes of this like chronic candida problems that people have is, first of all, you can have the mold exposure. So that causes a, an imbalance in the gut microflora. And then you've got this bioaccumulated myco, mycotoxins. So again, at that toxin level, it's causing a problem up here. But also candida, particularly things like candida albicans, have a really strong affinity for eating mercury. And we, li we live in a world now where a huge portion of the population have amalgam fillings. And so two organisms that really kind of work together to help the body handling all this mercury is H. pylori. So you see that in the stomach and then candida. And they kind of work together to handle these this mercury toxicity and ge in general kind of dental infections and dental problems. So if you've got H. pylori and um, H. pylori and candida and you've got like bad dental work or you know you've got dental infections, like treating those things is never going to fix them until you actually fix the root cause problem, which would be the teeth or the, or the mercury toxicity. So make sure you're tackling the, these things from the, this, this root cause perspective. So from this stage, again, bioresonance, very effective for candida. Probiotics, very effective for candida. Even going up that next stage, so the final level on this is the parasites, the worms, the flukes, and things like that. Bioresonance and probiotics, extremely effective for this. You can even be looking at this stage at using uh, probiotic species of yeast. So I'm not such a big fan of like Saccharomyces boulardii, but the way that I would go about this would be using kefir and trying to get some uh, more diversity in the in the microbiome by using things like fermented kefir because you've got 50 plus different species of bacteria and 5 to 10 different species of yeast. You're just going to be providing so much of what the body needs to build these natural systems that it's supposed to have back up so that it can handle viral, parasite, bacterial load. And I know I'm probably going to get the question, okay, you're saying probiotics all the time, you're talking about kefir, what if I have SIBO? SIBO is extremely misunderstood. It's not, the fact that it has in the term small intestinal bacterial overgrowth makes you think that bacteria overgrowing is the, is the problem and is a bad thing. SIBO is an adaptive response. It's never a root cause. It's always adaptive. It's always a symptom. It's always happening for a reason. You know, if you've got a lot of toxicity and it's coming out through your bile, which is how your body removes most of the toxicity, the first place that bile is going to hit is the upper small intestine. If you've got leaky gut, if you've got reduced intestinal permeability, all these toxins are going to leak back through. So the SIBO moves in to eat these toxins for you and to break them down. It's adaptive. It's smart. They're trying to work with you. So taking probiotics can be helpful because you actually help this process. Anytime you're looking at taking probiotics in a SIBO situation, you have to understand the five pillars. This is a, a course that we offer. We have a course, the Gut Health Bundle. One part of this is the five pillars and how to heal your gut. If one of your five pillar functions is not functioning correctly, taking probiotics with SIBO can give you more problems than benefits. It doesn't mean that probiotics aren't helpful. It means you need to understand the context of how to use them appropriately and make sure that your body has these natural cleaning and cleansing mechanisms reestablished so that it's able to handle them and use them in a, in a healthy way. So if you've got your stomach acid working, your digestive enzymes, your bile, your motility, your, your mucosa, if these are all working correctly, you're gonna be fine. It's gonna be, it's actually gonna be helpful and beneficial to use these things. If not, these are things that you need to consider addressing first. Again, root cause focus. If you've got a, uh, if you've got a gut problem, you have to address the root cause of the gut problem. And it always, without exception, comes down to dysfunction in one of the five pillars. That's why I made the course, because it's that important. You know, I don't have a million courses about different things. This is the single course that I really encourage people to look at. Because if you fix these things, the positive downstream impact from this point, it's just, it's just mind-blowing, you know? Everyone says, fix your gut, fix your health. It's like, yeah, well, if you want to fix your gut, you have to fix one of your five pillars. You have to fix which one is broken. So to summarize today's video, healing has a hierarchy. And when you're looking at trying to um, support your body through the healing process, we have to start small and work up. So you start at the smallest, the smallest possible thing and you work up in size because 
the, the larger things have the smaller things in them. You know, you work on killing the worms, they're full of candida, they're full of bacteria, they're full of lime, they're full of different viruses, they're full of EBV, they're full of mold and mycotoxins, they're full of these heavy metals. You kill the big thing, you're going to release all of this toxicity into your body and it's not going to be able to handle it. You have to start small and work your way up. Clear the, clear the, the metals, clear the mycotoxins. Once that's done, move up to the viruses, work on the EBV, clear the chronic colds and viruses and flus that you've had that you haven't been able to get on top of. From there, move up, work on the SIBO, work on the Lyme, work on the different types of bacterial dysbiosis. From there, work up to the yeast, work on the candida, work on the the, the, the microbiome and, and correct this in the gut. And then from there, that's when you move to parasites. You're at worms, you're at flukes, you're at things like that. If you don't follow this order, your body is going to, you're basically fighting against your body, you're going to feel worse for doing it, and you're going to make very little to no progress, and it's going to make you feel like you're suffering, you're doing all these things, and you're getting all these symptoms, and that feels like you're doing it right, but actually, it doesn't mean you're doing it right, it means you're just kind of going against your body's natural wisdom, healing is gentle, healing is soft, healing is kind, and healing feels good. If you don't, if you're not getting those things, if you're not being kind, if you're not being gentle, if you're not feeling good, you're not actually healing. So stop trying to do the opposite to get the thing that you want. You have to embody what healing is in the moment, in your approach, if you want to keep moving towards healing. Hope you found that video really helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, we actually have some comments. Let me just see. Rule says, William, what's up, man? Thanks for another video. You're most welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see you here. I uh, hope you found it really helpful. And uh, take care all. I'll see you soon, okay? See you, everyone. Bye.